The gentlelady from Florida for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to all our gentlemen for appearing before us today and coming forward. I want to thank you again for your courage um, today and also for your service to our, our nation. And as we predicted, our Democrat colleagues have immediately opened up with claims of conspiracy theories, MAGA extremism, mock outrage. Seems the only ones displaying mock outrage up here today are, in fact, the Democrats. Uh, because according to them, journalists who appear before us aren't journalists, and you here today are not whistleblowers, but we in fact know that you are. But uh, interesting times. The line about Republicans defunding police, that one seems to be particularly special, because respectfully to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, as the wife of a SWAT medic, as the wife of a first responder currently who has served our community for the last 16 years, I can tell you with certainty that no one, no one hates a bad cop more than a good cop. No one. And I see from you nodding your head that you agree with that sentiment. It is inaccurate and wrong to make that assumption that Republicans want to defund police. It is false. Because forcing a political agenda down the throats of our hardworking men and women of the FBI with the threat and then subsequent follow through of retaliation because they are whistleblowers because they didn't want to break the law, because they knew that it was wrong to target Americans without cause, and they swore an oath to the United States Constitution, not to a political party. That makes them whistleblowers. That makes them courageous for coming forward and telling the truth. Gentlemen, I'm going to ask you all to please turn on your microphones, because we're going to go really fast, okay? Mr. Friend, during your service with the FBI, you served on the FBI SWAT team, correct? Yes. As you heard, my husband is a SWAT medic and has been part of joint operations with the FBI. So I would like to know, what is the threshold for these call-outs, and can you briefly detail the type of crimes warranted for an FBI SWAT team call-out? There's a threat matrix, the SWAT matrix, in order to utilize the tactical team, uh, but it could be as easy as somebody being in possession of a firearm or a request from a local agency just to use the FBI SWAT team. Okay, so Mr. Friend, your security clearance was suspended by the FBI after raising concerns for the use of excessive, excessive force with regard to the use of FBI SWAT teams to your direct supervisor, correct? Yes. Would you consider this retaliation? Yes. Thank you. Mr. O'Boyle, you were suspended without pay from the FBI on September 23rd, correct? I was initially suspended on the 26th. The suspension of pay came a little bit later. Thank you for that clarification. You had raised concerns to your chain of command when no action was taken that you reported these concerns then to Congress, correct? Correct. Once you contacted Congress, you were then suspended. Uh, your top secret security clearance was then su suspended um, for those protected disclosures to Congress, correct? Correct. That seems like retaliation, no? That's to me. Okay, Mr. Allen, you were suspended from the FBI without pay on January 10th, correct? That's correct. You were suspended because you sent links to your squad to provide situational awareness about the FBI investigation on January 6th, correct? Yes. Yes or no, wasn't open source searches and sharing of information part of the duties of your job? Yes. And subsequently, after doing your job and your supervisors not liking the tone of the open source articles you provided because it didn't fit the FBI's narrative, your security clearance was revoked, correct? Yes. To all our whistleblowers, yes or no, do you believe that the retaliation pattern has a cooling effect on other agents from coming forward or speaking up Yes or no, Mr. Yes. O'Boyle? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Do you believe that the FBI is purposefully hostile to you for that reason to keep agents from speaking up? Yes. Yes, for that question. Yes. So I think it's clear we have a pattern here. If you speak up about the abuses you are seeing as an agent or are sharing information that may not fall in line with the FBI's political narrative, you will be suspended without pay, have your security clearance revoked, and your life will be turned upside down. It's pretty clear that the MO is if you don't comply, they will retaliate. If you don't agree with the political agenda, you get suspended. And they do it in such a way to deter others from speaking up and speaking out. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the weaponization of government. That is the weaponization of government, and that is why we are here today. Not because we have a political agenda, not because we are here to uh, 
go over p events of the past. We want to <coughs> fix it. We have to expose it, stop it, and prevent it from happening again. That is why we are here. These men are whistleblowers. The gentlemen who came before us in previous hearings, they were journalists. And just because you don't address them as such does not mean that they are not who they say they are. They have been retaliated against. And regardless of your party affiliation, this behavior is unacceptable, and we need to stop it. Republicans, Democrats, independents alike, this is a concern we should all share. This is the weaponization of government, and it is our job, our constitutional duty, to stop it. With that, I yield back. General A yields back. The chair recognizes.